Hi guys, welcome back to the Welsh Political Explainers uh, YouTube channel. My name is Lewis and I'm currently a final fourth year university student uh, studying politics at Cardiff University. Um, so I started the channel because I felt there was sort of a, there was an extreme lack of online content uh, relating to sort of Welsh politics, Welsh history and Welsh geography. So um, I just wanted to change that just a little. Um, so that's why I uh, made the channel. Um, so in this video, I wanted to take a look at a bit of a different topic, and I wanted to take a look at uh, the control of Wales's justice system um, and the policy areas sort of surrounding it in the form of justice, and whether or not it should become sort of a devolved issue. So this would mean uh, devolving the control of Wales's justice system um, to Wales's devolved institutions uh, for the first time, which it isn't currently the arrangement. Currently, uh, England and Wales operate as a single legal jurisdiction. Meanwhile, Scotland and Northern Ireland actually have their own um, separate and distinct legal systems that are largely controlled by each of their uh, respective uh, devolved governments. Um, since the Senate was created for the first time in 1999, um, Justice has never been a devolved policy area in Wales and has largely re uh, remained controlled by the UK government based in Westminster. However, uh, following the Senate's creation um, in 1999, um, a subset of Welsh laws have started, they've slowly began to emerge uh, over the 20 years uh, that the Senate has existed for um, that differentiate Wales from England. So in line with this, many uh, commentators, um, academics and uh, Welsh government ministers have actually called for uh, Wales to be granted its own, to be made its own separate uh, legal jurisdiction to reflect the, flat, the fact that there's a growing subset of laws um, that differentiate uh, Wales from England and for justice to become then become a devolved policy area for the first time. A recent example of uh, a senior minister uh, within the Welsh government calling for the devolution of justice for Wales can be seen when Council General for Wales, Mick Antoinette, made a series of calls for criminal and civil justice to be largely devolved to Wales and for its control to therefore be uh, relinquished by the UK government for the first time. Um, this can be seen in this series of tweets here um, and the sort of sentiments that Mick Antoinette expressed uh, within the tweets uh, have been echoed by other uh, senior members of the Welsh government. Research undertaken uh, by the Bar Council, which represents barristers uh, across England and Wales, suggests that if there have been uh, 239 total court closures across the whole of England and Wales since 2010, meaning that just 57% of all the courts that were open across both England and Wales in 2010 uh, remain open today. Um, analysis from the Bar Council also shows that the closure rate for uh, courts in Wales was actually somewhat higher than both uh, in both England and Wales, with 58% um, of Wales's criminal courts closing um, since 2010. This represents 21 of the 36 criminal courts that were open in 2010 um, being closed today. Um, this has caused a massive uh, backlog of criminal cases awaiting uh, court hearings uh, to mount up um, across both England and Wales, with 358,076 outstanding cases at the Magistrates Court, and then an additional 58,271 outstanding case cases at the Crown Court as of uh, April 2022. Many advocates for the devolution of justice to Wales say that it would provide the Welsh Government with the opportunity to be able to alleviate many of the aforementioned problems that we've discussed that have become present across Wales's legal system since 2010. So it would provide the Welsh Government with the opportunity to be able to develop a separate and distinct legal system um, and one that was more targeted to the specific needs of the Welsh population, which it isn't currently able to do, given that Wales is just treated as another region within the broader England and Wales uh, single legal jurisdiction. It would also provide the Welsh Government with the opportunity to be able to t specifically tailor and readjust and change uh, the separate legal jurisdiction based upon what was needed in Wales specifically, which obviously it is, uh, which isn't possible at the moment, given that um, control of justice is controlled by the UK Government um, and they don't specifically sort of introduce large changes to Wales. 
Um, it would also be able to, it would also provide the Welsh Government with the possibility of altering the significantly changing the ethos of the whole uh, Welsh legal jurisdiction to better reflect uh, the political ethos of the Welsh Government at the time. As a part of the 2021 Senate election manifesto, uh, the Welsh Labour Party called for home rule to be granted to Wales. So this uh, related to the granting of further autonomy to the Welsh Government from the UK Government. Um, and this uh, proposal for home rule for Wales included the proposal of devolving justice to Wales. Um, the party then won the most seats in the 2021 uh, devolved Senate election in Wales. And, and so it can probably be said that the idea of home rule sort of and, and devolution and therefore also the devolution of justice to Wales um, very much resonated uh, with voters across the country um, as the Welsh Labour Party did pick up the most seats in that election. Following the 2021 Senate election, uh, in 2022, the Welsh Government then published a policy paper entitled Delivering Justice for Wales. And this was under the uh, direction of the aforementioned Council General for Wales, Mick Antoinet, and Welsh Minister for Social Justice, Jane, uh, Jane Hatt. Um, the policy paper largely called for the devolution of various aspects of justice to Wales and highlighted um, that on two separate occasions, two independent commissions, one established by the UK government and then one established by the Welsh government itself, had recommended that uh, justice be devolved in part or in whole, in whole to Wales. So the first of these independent commissions uh, was called the Silk Commission, and it recommended that uh, youth justice and policing be devolved to Wales. And this recommendation came in 2014. And then the second and more influential of these two um, commissions was uh, called the Thomas Commission that was chaired by Lord Thomas, who had previously been the Chief Justice of England and Wales, um, and was tasked with looking at specifically at the, uh, he was tasked by the Welsh Government with looking specifically at the legal system in Wales and possible reforms that could be made for it. Um, the Commission published its report called the Thomas Report in 2019, which essentially called for the total devolution of justice to the Welsh Government, um, along with uh, policies relating to it such as policing. In February 2020, following the publishing of the Thomas Report in the previous October of 2019, the Senate voted by 38 to 50 to endorse and enact the proposals made by the Thomas Commission. However, the responsibility then of devolving justice to Wales lies uh, squarely with the UK government. Um, however, the current UK government, which is led by the UK-wide uh, Conservative Party, does not support the recommendations made by uh, the Thomas Commission and therefore has effectively failed to uh, engage with devolving justice in part or in whole to Wales. Um, the report came out as previously stated in the October of 2019. There's been very little progress on the part of the UK government towards implementing or even eff effectively engaging with the proposals made by the Thomas Commission, um, despite the Welsh Government's insistence and the results of the 2021 Senate election. The Welsh Labour Party, Plaid Cymru and the Welsh Liberal Democrats all support the devolution of justice to Wales in line with the Thomas Commission's recommendations. Meanwhile, uh, the Welsh Conservative Party is the only current party represented in the Senate which does not support uh, the devolution of justice to Wales. Um, and they, believes, they believe that responsibility for justice should remain solely with uh, the UK government based at Westminster. So that covers pretty much um, how justice in Wales currently operates and the arguments that there are in support of why, devolu uh, of why the devolution of justice to Wales should take place. However, I thought it would be very important as well to take a look at some of the reasons that are typically given as to why devolution, uh, the devolution of justice to Wales um, should not take place. The most clear opponents of the devolution of justice to Wales are the current uh, UK-wide uh, Conservative Party and its Welsh branch, as both factions of the party generally oppose the further delegations of powers from uh, the UK government based at Westminster to the Welsh government based uh, in Cardiff, including justice. However, there are some other opponents which you might not have initially expected. Um, given what we've previously discussed in this video. We can see this when the Thomas Commission's report was actually debated at the UK Parliament in January of 2020. So strangely, the uh, debate on the Thomas Commission's report was actually secured by Plaid Cymru's Westminster leader, Liz Salva Roberts, rather than the UK-wide Labour Party. Um, this is curious, as uh, you would expect the motion to have been tabled by the Labour Party, given that they were 
the party which had initiated the Thomas Commission at the devolved level. However, this wasn't the case, and it wouldn't have actually been debated at the UK Parliament had uh, the Westminster leader for Plaid Cymru, Liz Sala Roberts, not secured the debate uh, on the Thomas Commission's report. During the debate on the Thomas Commission's report and recommendations, Welsh Labour MP for the Rhondda constituency, uh, Chris Bryant, is recorded as saying, my question in relation to the proposal on the table is, does devolution solve any of these problems? I'm afraid it does not. So this highlights sort of two key issues related to the opposition towards the devolution of justice to Wales, with that being um, it, there's some division within the Labour Party as to whether or not uh, devolu the devolution of justice should take place uh, in Wales, with members of some members of the UK-wide party, such as Chris Bryan, actually opposing the devolution of justice to Wales. Meanwhile, the Welsh Labour Party, which lead the current Welsh Government, are actually in support of the just, uh, devolution of justice to Wales. So this highlights uh, sort of some 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 uh, conflict between the two uh, factions within the party. And then also, as Chris Bryant highlights, uh, some would suggest that the devolution of justice to Wales wouldn't do anything to solve many of the aforementioned problems that we've already discussed um, that have occurred in the criminal justice system since 2010. Then during the same debate on the Thomas Commission's recommendations, the Conser Welsh Conservative MP for the Montgomeryshire constituency, Craig Williams, is recorded as saying that the estimate that the estimate in the report is of between 105 million and 150 million. That is a, uh, that is a substantial amount. So this highlights another reason typically given as to why uh, the devolution of justice to Wales shouldn't take place and that's uh, the costs associated with it. Later on during the same debate, the same Welsh Conservative MP Craig Williams then continues by asking, may I just reflect that I am not sure that the people of Wales have any faith that devolving more is always a solution. As someone who is passionate about devolution, I think there is a growing appetite for the Welsh Government to get on and deliver rather than saying more powers. So this again highlights uh, another common argument which is typically cited against the devolution of justice to Wales, with that being that uh, is more devolution always a positive thing? So these extracts sort of just highlight the four main arguments which are typically given as to why the devolution of justice to Wales shouldn't take place, um, with these being the costs associated with it, the lack of perceived uh, public demand for it, um, the redundant nature of devolving justice to Wales, given that many of the same problems that exist within Wales' legal system um, are also present within England. And then the potential of devolving more powers to Wales uh, just for the sake of it. So all of these uh, are, are described uh, in the previous extracts by the Conservative MP for Montgomeryshire and the Welsh Labour MP for the Rhondda. We can now take a look at sort of each of these individually. So starting with the costs of the uh, associated with devolving justice to Wales. So the costs of simply having the uh, Thomas Commission conducting its work um, was probably likely to be quite a hefty amount. And then the further costs were related to the uh, devolving justice to Wales in whole or in part would likely be astronomically higher. So I think, you know, the costs associated with the process are definitely something that we need to be considered and sort of looked at in sort of a cost versus benefit um, analysis. Secondly, there might potentially be uh, not be a significant proportion of the Welsh population who strongly feel that justice should be, become a devolved policy area. However, given the results of the 2021 Senate election, there likely uh, is a strong proportion of the Welsh population who supports the devolution of justice to Wales, as parties which uh, support the, pro the devolution of justice to Wales did actually achieve a plurality of the votes in that election. However, with the rather low voter turnout of 46.6%, um, this may be a poor indicator of this. Thirdly, there might well be a case that remedies targeted towards uh, solving the uh, problems across the justice system in England and Wales, uh, such as court closures and the substantial backlog of criminal cases. Um, things such as a substantial change in UK government policy or increased funding for the sector could potentially mean that a Wales specific uh, approach to these problems uh, wasn't strictly necessary as they could be approved, uh, improved from uh, governance at Westminster. Finally, the case for the devolution of justice to Wales might, uh, might well prove to be redundant as there is no sort of strict uh, moral criteria to determine whether or not the devolution of justice to Wales should take place. Um, so these are the sort of the most commonly cited reasons uh, as to why the devolution of justice to Wales shouldn't take place. And I think they're really important to dis uh, consider 
um, given that we've also already looked at why the devolution of justice to Wales should take place. Overall, there are definitely arguments as to whether or not the devolution of justice to Wales should take place or not. There are strong uh, arguments uh, on both sides of the debate. Um, however, there seems to be a general consensus between academics and legal professionals who work within Wales's legal system that points towards the devolution of justice to Wales as being a relatively positive possibility. For, furthermore, the majority of political parties currently represented within the Senate or support it, with, Plaid Cymru, uh, with Welsh Labour, Plaid Cymru and the Welsh Liberal Democrats all supporting it. The creation of the Senate for the first time in 1999 and the laws and acts that have been passed since its establishment have resulted in a distinct Welsh, a somewhat distinct Welsh legal system for the first time since the late Middle Ages. So it would seem that the creation of a completely separate and distinct Welsh legal jurisdiction would be the natural next step in the devolution process. Although commonly cited reasons against this, such as its associated costs, lack of public demand and potentially redundant nature are things which certainly need to be considered. But I think the fact that these reasons are only uh, typically cited by the UK-wide and Welsh Conservative parties and some members of the UK-wide uh, uh, Labour Party mean that uh, the case for the devolution of justice for Wales from a Welsh point of view remains relatively strong. That pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. It's definitely been very interesting to take a look at whether or not justice should be devolved to Wales. Um, and I think that we very much made the case that it should be. I think in the time since the Senate was established, uh, Wales has become very much differentiated from England. And so the operation of England and Wales as a single legal jurisdiction seems a somewhat um, antiquated process. I think it's one that could very much be updated through the creation um, of a separate Welsh legal jurisdiction to reflect the, this differentiation. And then uh, one that would also be greater reflected by the devolution of justice to Wales and its relevant uh, devolved bodies. Thank you so, so much for watching the video. If you made it to this point, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you found the video uh, useful or interesting. Um, if you found the video useful, then please share it with another curious friend. I really appreciate it. Um, also subscribe to the channel because we'll make sure that you don't miss the next uh, explainer video when I get around to uploading it. Um, I'd be really interested to know in the comments if whether or not you think that uh, justice should be devolved to Wales or not. Um, if you're interested in keeping up with me, then follow me over on Twitter at Welsh Explainers, or there's also an Instagram for the channel um, at Welsh Political Explainers. So again, uh, thank you very, very much for watching the video. Hopefully you found it interesting. I know I certainly did. Uh, so see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.